Possibly the nominee. Would it shock me if the Democrats pulled another switcheroo? No, it wouldn't. So look, we're going to wait until they actually nominate Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz before we do any debates. So joining us now is Rena Shaw. She is a Republican political strategist and commentator um, based in Washington, D.C. Rena, always good to see you. So let's begin with that issue of a debate. Yesterday, J.D. Vance saying he wasn't even sure that Waltz would be the veep on the Democratic side, said the Democrats are going to pull some type of switcheroo. Um, how is that being interpreted out there among the voting public? I don't know that that point has really hit home anywhere because over the past couple of weeks, the thinking inside the Beltway has been maybe Trump should be the one pulling a switcheroo. After naming Vance, Vance has proven to be a bit of a sandbag to the Trump campaign. He has not injected any degree of energy. And in fact, on the trail, he's shown that he lacks charisma. He often is unable to land his jokes and unable to say the right thing often. And so I think this moment kind of demands uh, a rethink for the Trump campaign. Now, look, here we sit on August 7th. This was the date by which Kamala Harris had to name her VP. Uh, but that was more for, again, reasons regarding ballots. Ohio was talked about. But it's not impossible to change the VP pick, your running mate name. Uh, it'll just prove to be quite expensive and maybe even confusing. Early ballots do go out uh, rather quickly. And in September, some people will already be casting their votes. But again, never too late for either party to make a switcheroo. I just think it would be on the Republican side rather than Harris making a switch of walls. Hey, Rena, J.D. Vance seems to be baiting the vice president, Kamala Harris, into holding more news conferences. Um, isn't what's good for the goose good for the gander? Because doesn't that point the, the, the finger right back at Donald Trump, who seems to be um, liking Fox News and One America News, but nobody else? Well, there's no doubt that Trump would like to appear with a friendly network. And uh, he calls people friendly because they ask him questions that aren't tough. They tend to, you know, throw him easy ones, not curveballs. Of course, I'm referencing uh, Trump's appearance at the National Association of Black Journalists having gone pretty disastrously. And, and that's for people on both sides of the aisle. There are people on the right who even concede that former President Trump did a pretty bad job in that setting. But again, that's why Trump told Harris that he wants to meet her ahead of September 10th and debate her with Fox News as the host rather than with ABC on the 10th. I think both of them should meet in both venues. I think the more the public sees both candidates, it's good for both campaigns because, look, Kamala Harris is enjoying a reception that many insiders could never have predicted. This momentum she's got with the wind at her back rolling into the DNC, which will be later this month, I think it's not going to go away anytime soon. So she's got a boost right now, and I think it'll be sustained through September. You know, let's talk about last night. Crowd size does not determine uh, the political outcome, but the Harris campaign is packing them in, and the former president is once again complaining that his crowds are being held back. Are they? Well, it's hard to tell if you're not on the ground, right? And that's why the good reporting of Scripps News reporters is pretty important to all of us as we pay attention with the less than 100 days to go. Uh, we need the facts. And, and with talk of crowd size, of course, my mind goes back to 2016, Dell, of Trump saying and, and frankly, doctoring pictures to make it look like his inauguration crowd was bigger than Obama's. Uh, so this is a moment in which we have to really emphasize how important it is to deal in facts. And, and that is why news media exists this and we ought to be seeking out information from every platform we can as Americans. This is a most consequential election and misinformation, disinformation are, are, is the biggest problem in this election. We've also got AI, you know, deep fakes, doctored, not just pictures, but audio calls going out to voters. People don't know what to think anymore. And I think what we all need to realize, we all have an individual hand in this. We should be taking in information from all sides and coming to our own conclusions about these candidates. Hey, hey, Rena, um, I'm thinking Norman Rockwell, to tell you the truth. Um, you're a Republican strategist. How do you fight back against a guy who served in uniform, taught high school, took his football team to the state championship and then won, and then he went to Congress? Can you say cue Jimmy Stewart? 
Oh, Del, that's a quite a loaded question there, but I think it's a very important one you're asking. As a political strategist right now, I'm not currently advising any Republicans, but my whole career has been in the Republican Party, and I'm still a card-carrying Republican. I truly believe in the greatness of this party's values, but many of those good values have been overshadowed in the past eight years. I will say, when I saw Walls take this, uh, the stage with Harris yesterday in Philadelphia, it gave me some vibes of Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney. A lot of what Walls was saying was stuff that I heard come out of Paul Ryan's mouth just 10 years years ago and and now we know that the party is no longer looking at leadership like that of former speaker paul ryan uh it's changed a great deal maga is certainly the banner for the party and trump continues to hold that up i do think jd vance today was quite irked by walls as mentioning of him yesterday from the podium one most salient point and i would be remiss if i didn't say this as somebody who was born and raised in southern west virginia it, at the foothills up of the appalachian mountains i'm a proud mountain mama uh I, I, too, take great issue with Hillbilly Elegy. I've never read it, never watched uh, the made-for-screen uh, version of it, and uh, I think it did slam the very community J.D. Vance came from. So I really liked that Walls said that, and I think that irked J.D. Vance. So that's why today we heard Vance slamming Walls' military career, saying that he abandoned his troops and didn't go to Iraq, and that's a bad thing. Now. I, I think, again, we need to deal in facts here. I think the very fact that J.D. Vance is attacking Walls' military service shows that he's scared and doesn't know how to counter the very good points that Walls is making. Yeah, I got to uh, give a shout out to my friends in the northern part of the state, Reno, where I grew up. But um, final question before I let you go. Is there a joy factor? And if so, how do you measure it? Lots of people say the Vance Walls ticket actually makes them just smile. Um. Well, like I said, I'm a longtime Republican, but I never supported Trump in 2016 or in 2020. And certainly I'm working against him this time because to me, it's not about how much you love Kamala Harris. She's, she is the best shot right now between um, really the extinguishing of the flame of Trumpism uh, and, and where we stand today. Uh, she can defeat Trump, and if she defeats him again, I think the Republican Party needs to look inward and, and really have a moment where they ask themselves, why are we a losing party in 2020, in 2024? And I think Harris has a stronger shot than most Republicans thought. But to answer your question on the nose, I think this moment is, uh, is really challenging a lot of mindsets. A lot of people inside the Beltway have been wrong, and I think this next uh, less than 100 days tells us that we all need to be paying close attention because because we need these people who are trying to lead our country to deal in facts. So it's time for some more substance. I look forward to the debates and I am just ready for the ugly campaigning to stop. I, we need more light. We don't need darkness. So again, looking at that Philly uh, rally last night, it was hard not to smile and hard not to feel hopeful when you're seeing such joy being projected by two people who want to lead this country at the highest level next. Rena Shaw, who hails from the great Mountaineer state of West Virginia, can't be all that bad. Rena, thank you very much. As we had to break, thank by the go. way, um, we're taking a look at Wall Street. As you can see, the Dow continues to rebound from Monday's terrible losses right now in positive territory, 39,225. More importantly, up almost a half a percent, more than a half percent. We're back out on the scene in three minutes. Stay with us. At Consumer Cellular, we pride ourselves on getting you the exact same nationwide coverage as the leading carriers for up to half the cost. But don't worry, we've got a lot more than that going for us. Woo! Like this beautiful store in Arizona, for example. It's the perfect place for me to tell you a little bit more about our phones and how they can become...